Hello, everyone. It's um, a pleasure to be here on a Friday afternoon. So thank you for joining us. My name is Abigail Nelson. I am an education customer success manager at Adobe, and I work with UQ on um, you know opportunities in terms of the technology available to you and your students um, of different ways of doing things. So a lot on that uh, note, I'll just hand to Sarah quickly to do an intro, and then we'll dive into the presentation today. Awesome. Thanks, Abby. Hi, everyone. My name's Sarah. Um, I'm a solutions consultant at Adobe. Basically, it means a product expert. Um, so really look at ways in, in that you guys can get the most out of our tools. So we'll hopefully be showing you some tips and tricks today. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. We won't um, death by slide for too long because we're really going to dive in the tool today and show you what's possible. But yes, the topic is engaging active learning and assessment. And really the focus for today is the idea of preparing all students for what the future holds in terms of digital skills. What we've found at Adobe is a lot of our pro tools, whilst they're amazing and just so fabulous and effective and used within industry, they are somewhat of a learning curve for people to learn. So we're here today to talk to you about Adobe Express, which is our tool that prepares all students. It's easy to learn um, for a world that is increasingly demanding digital fluency and creative human communication. On that note, this is what it looks like, is in that little A that's a rainbow. We'll get you in there today to give it a go. But again, this tool is for everyone. The idea of it is that it is very low lift, but high impact. So hopefully today we can give you some ideas of ways you might, in your discipline, use the tool to engage students in ways maybe you hadn't before or you thought of and you just didn't know which tool to use. Um, and Sarah will be taking us through some examples on how to do that. Before we do dive into the tool, I just wanted to um, talk about, you know, what's next. If, if you did see the tool today and there was something interesting to you or you thought, wow, I'd really like to get that in front of students, but how am I going to support them in making sure they know how to use it? The good news is, is if you were able to give your students access via the university, and good news, there are lots of student licenses available. We also have student badges available that students can do asynchronous microcreds, and they can achieve a badge which can go on their LinkedIn or into their resume, but of course also just build their skills. So very happy to talk to you that um, talk to that after the presentation today, if it is of interest, and I'll also you know touch base with Charlotte and the team on how they can access that. Just noting that these badges are available only if you're using an enterprise license. So that means one that the university provides you or your students. But again, we can we can chat about what's possible there. Without further ado, though, let's dive in, Sarah, if you don't mind. If you would like to follow along today, this is the URL for Adobe Express on the page. It's also available in a mobile app. So whatever your preferred tool mechanism is, I would recommend starting on the dashboard if you've never used it before, just to get really comfortable. But um, yeah, Sarah will take us through the, the, the options that are available. Thanks, Sarah. Perfect. And I've just dropped, so there's two links I've dropped in the chat uh, for everyone. Um, the second link is directly to Adobe Express, uh, which the home page looks like this. I should be sharing my screen now. Can I just get a nod? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that is the second link. If you just want to go to the home page, um, use the second link. But um, before we get into it, I'd also like you perhaps in another tab or or, or something like that um, to click the first link that I've sent um, because it, it does include an interactive activity, um, which hopefully will serve as an example of something you guys can use uh, within your classrooms or uh, for your students. Sorry, sorry, Sarah, we can't. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Abigail. Um, we can't see the links that you've shared. Yeah, Sarah, do you mind just sharing the activity one again? It hasn't come through oh, on the chat. Okay. Or I can grab the link for you. That's fine. Yeah. Maybe I've got it. Oh, chat. Oh, there we go. I've got a question. There it is. Beautiful. Excellent. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that is a link to the activity. Oh, yeah. And I can see Abby's got the link to express in here. Perfect. All right. Apologies. Zoom is not my <laughs> strong suit. Um, okay, so while that activity is loading up, I just wanted to explain uh, to you yeah, the basic premise of um, Express. Abby nailed it on the head before um, in that it, like, our technology across our creative cloud is truly industry leading. Um, industry professionals use our tool to create really high end uh, content. Uh, but for the everyday user, sometimes that those powerful tools are, uh, there is a little bit of a learning curve to them. Although I will say this is um, 
very much changed with the um, dawn of generative AI. It actually makes those tools unbelievably um, fun and easy to use, but it's an express demo today. Um, but what Express tackles is is uh, the it's it's essentially for the everyday user to create content um, of all sorts of media variations, um, and it makes it uh, very very easy and in quite intuitive um, to be able to create content. So I'm going to show you the kinds of content that we can create today. Um, but first, you can see here, but on the home page, uh, we have all our various media types that we can create for. We can create video, photos, PDF documents. We've, of course, got a bit of generative AI in Adobe Express. Um, and then you've got all your various quick actions here, which I'm going to take you guys through uh, in just a moment. But first, I'm going to jump into our uh, whiteboarding session here. And I can see that Abby's in here and we've got a few, we've got quite a lot of people in, in this um, workspace now. And what I can imagine you guys can all see is all your various um, names and mouses. Uh, what I want you to do here is I want you to grab onto this star at the top of the screen here and drag it uh, along the um, various questions to let us know how much you agree or disagree with the following statements. Um, so a few things while you guys do that. If there's lots of stuff on your screen, you want to make a nice simple view, you can um, you can click. There's usually like a panel that sits out here. You can just close that panel by clicking the X bar here. And sometimes the layers uh, stack is actually opened up as well. So if you want that out of your way, you can uh, definitely close that as well. And whilst I let everyone finish up here, you'll notice for those who have completed the questionnaire, um, if you click on this little uh, animated pen here, if you click play, grab a star and move it along the scale to indicate how much you agree or disagree with the above statement. So you can see that's a fun little uh, character explainer to explain the activity. Um, and this would be really great to use if um, you're creating some take home content uh, and you're maybe not going to be there to walk the class through a particular activity, you can really easily in Express make some fun explainer characters in here. Um, and, of course, you can see that you can drop in your own uh, uh, video footage as well in here. So what I love about this, firstly, is what you can obviously see here is this is how we sort of brain dump and uh, collaborate all at once. And what I love about this activity as well is we, we get a takeaway at the end of this session. So this is a really, really great way for your students to um, come in, collaborate and, and put their ideas to a page. And what I like about using it in a live classroom format as well is for the students who may be a bit more shy, a bit more, um, you know, not as socially brave to put their hands up and actually answer a question, this is a really great way to sort of incorporate, um, you know, that's, I don't want to say backseat kind of learning, but, you know, it really can cater for um, all kinds of engagement here. Um, so, yeah, really think about using Express as, a, as an icebreaker tool. It's really good to see that you guys think that creativity will be important for if future employability. I, I totally agree, obviously, um, and that we're on the agreeing side of the uh, generative AI fueling that creativity. I totally agree with that as well, and we'll show you a little bit how we can leverage generative AI in our assignments. So... That's sort of the beginning of our icebreaker activity. Now I'm going to jump into more of a uh, generic kind of express demo. Uh, so I'm going to navigate back to the home page. And if you guys want to follow along, you, you certainly can. But the goal for me today is to show you everything you can do. So it might be a little hard. I might move kind of quickly. Um, so if, if I am moving too quickly, uh, just feel free to watch along and I'm happy to answer any questions at the end or leave you with any tutorials if you really want to learn how to do something step by step that I've shown you. But before we get into Express now, I just want to talk a little bit about this generative AI piece um, at Adobe. And I think it's really, really important, especially in the age of that we're in now, where there's so many different uh, generative AI players in the industry. And uh, I just want to talk about Adobe's unique approach to generative AI. Hopefully this spinning ball of death <laughs> goes away. So Adobe takes quite, uh, whilst this loads, 
Adobe takes quite a unique approach to generative AI re relative to the other players uh, in the market. I may have to restart my PowerPoint again. There we go. Okay. So Adobe takes quite a different approach to generative AI relative to the other players in the market. And I just think it's really important for you guys uh, to be across this. Um, it relates to essentially four principles. Now I've got a too long, didn't read down the bottom here uh, to have it very quickly summarized. Um, but I really uh, want to talk to um, sort of the two shouldering components of our four pillars of how we approach AI differently at Adobe. The first one is uh, how our data is processed to power our machine learning and generative AI. And essentially what makes us unique is our data set, which is the Adobe stock library, uh, is, is just that. That is our data set. So we have all the licensing rights to use our uh, stock library as a data set to train our model. And what essentially that means is because we have uh, the licensed uh, permissions to use uh, those images in that library, um, any output that Firefly creates is essentially commercially viable because it's not infringing on any copyright materials or, or anything like that. So an example of this is if you type in Mickey Mouse eating an ice cream at Disneyland, it'll recognize it's a mouse, it'll recognize it's a fairground uh, for, for cont contextual reasons, but it's not going to replicate the IP of Mickey Mouse. And that's because it's, uh, it's we don't have the rights to use that. Um, so it's really great, especially um, for people not wanting to infringe on copyright issues. If you use Adobe Firefly, you can rest assured that that you're not going to be. Now, contributors to the Adobe Stock Library can uh, opt in and out of this machine learning process. Um, so we're also thinking about the creators as well and, and their comfortability with machine learning. Uh, we do actually offer indemnic indemnification to our enterprise customers uh, based on uh, how our model works. So if there is a copyright issue raised, uh, Adobe will actually go in and pay for the legal fees to fight that case because we are so sure that um, our, uh, our machine learning is is uh, completely stands up in a court of law in terms of um, not infringing on any copyright materials. So that's really good. We're, re we're seriously the only players in, in the industry um, that is thinking of AI in this way. And I think it's going to, that's going to give it the ultimate sticking power. If you think of like early uh, music streamers, uh, there were lots of early streamers uh, when music streaming uh, came into the market and they kind of burnt hard and fast because they weren't built for commercial viability. And I think this may be what we see in the years to come with generative AI. Um, and just to point out, like, this is sort of an example of um, some of our other competitors um, being sued, actually, be, um, for their uh, practices not being um, so great. The Getty Image logo was starting to surface on a lot of Stable Diffusion's um, outputs, and that's because it had used the Getty Image library as its data set without having the rights to use it. So it's really, it's it, if you use Express and Generative AI uh, by extension, you just know that you're not, um, you're basically acting in good faith uh, with regards to the rest of the industry. Another thing before I jump back into Express, um, we really take an ethical approach to Generative AI. Uh, I will whiz through this one, um, but a Essentially, we just want to make sure that transparency is at the core of anything we create with our generative AI. Um, and essentially how we make that a transparent process is uh, we essentially tag on uh, content credentials to everything that gets created with Adobe's Firefly. So a content credential um, essentially is metadata that tracks all the things that went into an image um, that was generated with generative AI. So um, how it was created, what was edited uh, with it, how it was shared, and all that data is infused to that image. So wherever it goes, um, it'll always have that layer of transparency um, to it. And that's that's how we think uh, it, that's what the industry standard we believe uh, should be going forward. Because obviously we don't think there's anything wrong with editing images using generative AI but there needs to be a layer of transparency around that. The end goal, of course, um, is that people will see this little content credential online uh, as we move into this uh, generative AI space, and they'll be able to click on that little content credential and inspect the metadata of that image, almost like a nutrition label on your food, um, so you can see what goes on in that image. All right. 
That is all uh, from the generative AI piece. There's lots to cover. We can really go deep on, on that particular subject, but I just thought you guys should be aware of it. Um, and again, I know we're talking about Express today, but to show you uh, what we mean here, here's that content credential on a Photoshop um, piece of work. And if I hit preview there, you can see there's that nutrition label of the kinds of edits that went in to um, this particular generative AI image. And if I scroll down the bottom here, you can actually see, oh, the computer's lagging a bit. Um, you can see that it says uh, Adobe Firefly was used as part of a part of this image. All right. So now we're back on the homepage of Express and really the bread and butter of Express is templated assets. So no matter what you want to create, you can usually find a template for it uh, within the search bar at the top of Adobe Express. So before you search anything, you want to make sure just so it's not a, a whole bunch of um, returned results. If you're just looking for templates, you, uh, you want to make sure that you're filtering for templates at the top there and then you can search really whatever you like. So in this case, let's say I wanted to create some infographics here. I could pop that in the search bar and you can see I've got many, many infographics to choose from as a base uh, for my design work. So this kind of um, helps you to um, minimize the blank page anxiety. So we find a lot of uh, people who aren't traditionally like creative as part of their work, they get a bit of blank page and anxiety. Where do you even start from? So this templated asset really um, kind of eliminates that. And what's great is if you do jump into a template, so like so, you click any template, hit customize, everything within that template is editable. So sometimes things might be grouped. In, in this instance, everything seems to not... Uh, to be nice and individualized. But let's say this text here, I wanted to make a change. I would have to double click to get down into that into that text box. So if you're clicking on it and you're not understanding why you can't make a change to that text, double click. And the reason why you have to double click is because it's grouped there. So you can see on the little corner here, you can see that it's grouped. So if you don't want things to be grouped together because maybe you like to navigate, you don't like the navigation experience of that, just click ungroup and then everything is broken up into individual elements, as you can see, as opposed to one grouped element. Okay. Now to make changes, like I said, you just double click and then uh, you can make those changes there. So for text, um, it's very, very easy to do. Uh, and then you'll notice that the uh, uh, the Contextual window here on the left hand side is contextual. So what depending on what I click on, um, this panel here will change. Uh, and that is so that um, essentially it minimizes the space on your, in your editor. So things can be nice and clean and easy to understand. Um, I'm just going to ungroup this image here. And if I click on that image, there we go. Oh, actually. Sorry, I'm going to move this down the layer stack. Um, so what I'm doing here is um, I'm wanting to make a change to this image. And again, this is probably a good thing to work you guys through. Um, but the image is sitting behind this circle in this particular template. So, so I'm clicking on it. I can't really quite get to it. So what I would do is I'd either right click and um, send this back a layer. Um, but I don't really know where uh, the circle is sitting in my layer stack. So I can either right click and send that circle to the back or I can open up my layer stack here and uh, actually grab that particular circle and shift it down the layer stack so it sits under my image. So these are just um, some little navigation uh, tips. So when you are using a template, uh, you, can, you can make changes um, easily. Now, you can see I've now got my image selected. If I did want to replace that image with an image of my own, I can just hit the replace tool here. And this is where I can either uh, use an image of my own to uh, upload and replace that image with, or I can leverage the Adobe stock library that as well comes with Express. So you don't need to actually license any of this stock imagery. Um, you do get a subset of already licensed stock imagery as part of your Express uh, account. So you can see I'm now in the stock library and all I need to do is hit click on a particular image 
And then if I don't like how that's framed within the circle crop, as you can see, that image has replaced into a window that has been cropped like a circle. If I don't quite like the positioning, all I need to do is hit double click on that. And you can see I can shift this around um, within that window there. So you can do so much uh, with regards to how you edit things. Like I said, it's all contextual. I'm not going to go through it all today because really um, you can just have a look at each of these components in, in your window um, to see what's what's a, available for you to do. So, for example, if I wanted to add in a little drop shadow, I could do that um, and so on and so forth. If I wanted to add a filter on my image, I could go into the effects panel and add a filter. So really have a play around with that panel there. Um, now, a few great things about Express that's uh, unique to Express and not in the other Creative Cloud tools. So I um, make my colleagues very, very jealous when I show people this because they wish they had it in Photoshop and InDesign and things like that. Firstly is the uh, animated animation tool. So if you have students that have a preferred um, second language or, or sorry, preferred first language or English is their second language and you want to maybe create um, some like a takeaway or something like that for them in their preferred language, you can easily translate your templates and any text within that template using the translate tool. Uh, you can do it uh, page by page. So you can see I've only got one page open here. Um, but if I open this drop down menu as well, I can actually decide what I want translated and what I don't want translated. So let's say I wanted the, the title to remain the same, but I wanted this informational stuff to be translated. I can actually deselect those top lines there. Now, to translate, all I need to do is uh, go in and just pick really as many languages as I want to create for. Uh, so you can uh, really go down the line here. I'm going to unselect English because it already is in English. Um, so I've, I've seen students use this as well as part of their um, like committee, club committees. Like um, one of the unis we worked with uh, had a Japanese uh, club and all of their um, like posters that I put their that they put around campus was all in Japanese or had Japanese writing in them. This is a really great way to bring in other languages as well. So you can translate. If you need to add um, some graphs or bars to your infographics, I'm just going to delete this one. Um, you can use uh, bar graphs and things like that uh, if you navigate to your elements tab. And this is where you'll find lots of different things. So you'll need to um, select the tab that's appropriate to what you're actually looking for. So you can see I've got all selected, but if, if I click design assets, you can see these are like lovely visual um, components that let's say, um, I don't know, I was uh, doing an infographic about a toaster. I could actually search for a toaster in the search bar and you can see it will show me a lot of different elements for that particular thing. Uh, you've got backgrounds and shapes and icons. Um, but what I'm uh, looking for today is charts. Well, that's because I've got toaster selected. So here are all the different charts that are available to me. Um, so you've got your basic donut and pie charts here. So this is where you can come in here and add uh, different items for your pie chart, give them titles. This is where you would make all those edits. Um, you can change things like the color of your text or within here. So again, this is a contextual editing window. And obviously this black text here is probably a little bit too dark for my dark blue background. So if I wanted to change that, I could just click the color swatch there, make sure that is white. And maybe I want to bold that text there, make it a little bit uh, stronger and I can do that. Now, if I wanted to title things, you know, Apple, all I need to do is come down here and add uh, an banana. Oh my God, banana. There we go. Is it two ends? Abby, help me out here. It's just one end, banana. Just one. <laughs> banana. I think banana. two ends, at least in my young people, small people's lives. But yeah, banana, but banana. <laughs> banana. Um, if you need to add more categories, you simply do that by selecting new item and, and it will continue to build that down. If you want to change the colors of your graph, all you do, double click and uh, change the color in your color swatch there. 
So you can really have that customizability. Um, if you want to change a little bit about how your graph is laid out, use the settings window or the slider. This is essentially your uh, settings window. Click on that and you can see if I toggle certain things on and off. So for example, the legend, I can toggle that on and off. It'll have a pie, uh, a donut chart without a legend or with a legend. Uh, if, depending on whether I want my labels actually close around that uh, particular donut chart, I can switch that on and off as well um, and make some edits to the donut chart uh, here. If I wanted to change my uh, values to percentages, I can also do that here. So this is essentially how you would um, uh, make edits to any of your graphs, depend uh, depending on which graph you actually select for. This one I also think is fun if you're talking in percentages. Um, all you need to do is use the value slider here uh, and it'll uh, create a lovely percentage graphic as well for you there. So that would be your infographics. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about um, generative AI as well and how to incorporate generative AI as part of your um, like assignments where you maybe need to explain or um, create a pre viz for a particular assignment. So I'll navigate back to the home screen and I'm going to open up this project here. Now, this is the endpoint of what we're uh, going to, I'm going to show you how to create for here. Now you can see uh, we've got uh, like essentially something that looks a little bit like an infographic again. You've got a blank kind of desert landscape and you've got all these different clean energy solutions um, with little, little bits of explainer graphics as well as, as part of that. So um, I'm going to show you how a student might come in and, and create that uh, using this base image here. Okay, so you can see if I go into present mode, firstly, you can see, let's say I'm a student, I've been given a landscape and the assignment is maybe how would you uh, use clean energy um, solutions to um, create clean energy for, for this environment. So I could start with a blank image here. I'm obviously in uh, present uh, presenter mode, which you can also do in Express. Abby started in presenter mode in Express earlier. And then if I click ahead here, you can see how this environment changes with all of our previs options. If I click again, you can see that we have our graphical elements that come in and actually further explain the work that's been done here. So let's start from scratch and show you guys how this was achieved. Okay, so here's my blank uh, landscape. If I, if I want to add generative AI elements, all I need to do is click on it. And as you can see, our contextual bar here opens up. And this is where you'll find the generative fill option. Now, this image can be images you've loaded in. It could be stock footage. This really works for any image that's in your editing uh, express uh, instance. So you can see I've hit generative fill here and I'm given a brush. Now I can increase or decrease this brush size depending on how detailed I want to uh, select for. So I'm gonna select this top part here because I'm thinking I'd like to add in some wind turbines. Wind turbines. And then all I need to do is use that text prompt there to hit generate. And then it's always going to give me, I believe it's three outputs. In some tools, it's sometimes four outputs, um, but I think in Express, it's three. Uh, and then all it, it will do is it'll go through and it'll, it'll use generative AI to build out a nice little pre-visit that. Again, it's it's just a really great way to help your students communicate ideas that are in their head, but uh, maybe, you know, tricky to explain or um, and things like that. So, Sarah, Sarah, sorry, I'll add another example if that's okay, only because yeah. I was just talking to an academic about this recently. They um, had asked some first-year students to start ideating not sure exactly the course, but it was a STEM course, ideating ways that, you know, sea anchors could be less disruptive to coral reefs. So, you know, how could it be dis less disruptive to the fish and also look more beautiful in the reefs in terms of like it being a, um, a tourism area? And students use Firefly for that. So they created different, you know, ideations of what that might look like and came up with this really amazing sort of coral hand thing using Firefly. But that's just a use case, I guess, in terms of for ideation or assignment assets like the one you're showing. 
Yeah, it, and it is such a powerful tool to bring that visual component uh, for people who are who would otherwise maybe lack the skill to actually get their idea on to paper. They were maybe once restricted to text only yeah. uh, examples, which I think works in concert with this, but it makes you able to actually um, vis- create that vision as well. Yeah. Thank um, you. Now we'll say this is, we're on the image model uh, one in Express. Um, So basically our Firefly image model, uh, uh, basically our generative AI technology, um, it's it's going through iterations, it's it's evolving over time. Uh, We're actually on the image uh, image model three version as of now, Uh, but Express is is lagging a little bit. It should be updated uh, relatively soon, but it's still using the image model one instance. Um, so this generative AI will obviously improve. Um, essentially, this is the worst it's ever going to be. It's always going to evolve and get better and better as the machine evolves. So you can really um, build out your environment here. If I wanted to add some you know, rainwater tanks, all I would need to do is do that. And again, you're given three uh, results always, but if you're not quite happy with those results, you can just keep generating until you get to something that um, looks right to you. And if you see something that looks totally rogue and you think Adobe should know about it, definitely give it a thumbs down uh, response. And that just helps us to improve our machine learning as well. So I think that looks pretty good to me. I think I prefer that one. But let's say if any of these... um, results weren't quite right or looked really distorted, I could come in and um, give Firefly some feedback there. Let's do this one more time with some solar panels. And by the way, if anyone's got any questions, please feel free to interrupt um, and ask them. I'm more than happy to explain anything a little bit more if I've brushed over it or things have made sense. So they're pretty good. Not loving the results there. So maybe I would, you know, give give Firefly a bit of feedback uh, with regards to that. But let's just leave it for now. So now I have a really nice image, uh, but I'd love to add some extra explainer content to this assignment so that people know what they're looking at. So much like the templates uh, from a global level that you can access from the homepage, uh, you can also access text-based templates. So this is really good if you are adding text elements to your work, but you want the layout to look and feel well-designed, but you don't necessarily how to know how to make that uh, look good. If you hit the text box here, you can see if we scroll down, there's all sorts of different text templates that you can leverage as well. So, and of course you can always um, use your search window here to help narrow that down. So let's say I just want text that um, conveys information very well. I can just uh, drop in information there and then um, I can bring in these text elements. So you can see if I could just drop that in to my uh, window there, you can see, again, this is a grouped asset. So all your text templates will come in as grouped assets. You don't have to ungroup them. So long as you know that to make a change, you just need to double click or click down until you get into that particular text window. So let's say if I wanted to make a change to uh, this 30% here, you can actually see that we're in a group within a group here. So um, this little section here is also grouped. So sometimes you do have to click down to actually make a change there. But once you have your boundary box, we'll uh, make it obvious what, what you've selected. So then you can make a change here. And of course, just because it's a template doesn't mean that everything is not editable. So if I wanted to change the color of my font, or, or yeah, the color of my text or the font of my text, I can always do that just as I would in any other kind of workflow there. So you can see I can change the color to green. Maybe green's a little bit too bright, but you get the idea. It's everything is editable within Express. And of course, if I wanted to bring in an arrow to actually indicate what my wall of text is referring to, uh, that's when I would jump into my elements, which is where we got our charts from. And I would, again, search for an arrow. 
which would then show me all the various arrows that are across my design assets, my icons, shapes, backgrounds, things like that. So I could bring this arrow in here and, you know, flip it around, adjust it, and there we go. Now, before I move on to some other media types, obviously uh, for the eagle-eyed viewers, they saw that this was an animated presentation. So uh, what's great about Express is that it combines a lot of different media creation um, formats under the one roof. So you can have a static graphic like this and actually bring in animated components. So to do that, again, contextual window, you click the thing that you're wanting to animate. And in this instance, because it is a, it's a grouped asset, my um, the things that I can do at a group level are limited to actually just animation. But we hit uh, animate here, and then we've got all of our animation animated elements that we can choose from. Now, with animations, um, you tend to have a fade in action, a looping action, and then a as an out outward action. So it's essentially how your graphic enters the screen, what it does on when it's on the screen, and how does it, how does it leave the screen. So I'll set a uh, fade in um, as my entering animation. And you can see if you click on those that little slider settings uh, option, every animation has a degree of um, customizability to it. So you can change the duration. This is quite a simple animation. You can change the personality of the movement. So for example, if I did like a tumble instead, you can see I actually can adjust like how much our, our tumble is rotating by, the duration of it, uh, and then the direction as well. So every single animation has quite a lot of um, flexibility there. So you can really uh, make it your own. Okay. Now, let's say you've added animate, animated elements um, to your piece of work, but they're all coming in at the same time and you need to make it look staggered in the way that this is staggered here. So you can see things come in one after the other. Uh, if you're in presentation mode, which I'm in now, what you'll need to do to, um, to adjust those animated, the timing of those animated elements you just hit the ellipsis tool up here and go into edit timeline. And then essentially what you're in is your video editor. So it's a little bit tricky to find one when you're in uh, present mode and you'll know that you're, you're, you've got a pre uh, presentation open because this little present uh, option will be up here. But if you're in the video mode, um, it's 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 essentially this experience. So what you're doing by opening up your timeline is you're opening up your video editing uh, user interface. Okay, so if I grab my little playhead to the start of my graphic where everything's off screen, you can see I can press play here and everything starts to animate in. Now, the timeline here also works off a contextual uh, user interface as well. So if I click on the graphic that I want to adjust the animation for and the timing for, let's say this first graphic here, you can see that graphic is now sitting above my timeline in that purple box area here. If you can't see it, hit show layer timing on and then you'll, and then you'll be able to see it. Um, and this is where you adjust the timing of your clip. So if I wanted to have the um, graphic come in at a later point, all I would need to do is just drag the start and end points along my timeline. And you can see if I bring my uh, playhead up the top here, you can see the fade in only, only starts to happen when the playhead starts to cross over that purple box. So that's how you animate in Express. Uh, and of course, um, if I just click out of that, all these little purple dots here will indicate the, the end point of each graphic. So that's how you uh, know um, what graphic is what and where it sort of comes in on the timeline. Okay. Conscious that this is very fast paced. So again, like I said, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to uh, help uh, send some tutorials if something's of particular interest. So that is basically your video animation uh, moving components of Adobe Express. I'm going to go back onto the home page now. 
to talk a little bit about that animated explainer character that we saw at, at the top of the presentation. Um, this is, to, to get to this, I would um, leverage my quick actions window here. Now, this is um, really, really useful for a lot of those one action things you often need to do, but maybe it's hard, maybe it's tricky to do, or you don't want to open up a whole different program to do one thing. Like, for example, maybe you want to remove the background of a, of a headshot or an image. You can just jump into the remove background quick action here. And then all you would need to do, it'll open up a little sandbox editor here. And then let's say I've actually got an image of you, your, um, your leader at University of Queensland. I could come in, get that headshot and easily remove that background. So it's really, really powerful. This does use Photoshop to really cleanly take out uh, the background there. Uh, you can do things like create GIFs and all sorts in your quick actions bar. Uh, but where you'll find your animator, your character animate is right at the end here. And if you can't find them, hit view all. And then this is where you'll see all of your quick actions. And then you get to your animate from audio characters. And as you can see, you have a library of various characters that you can choose from. Uh, and you can actually use your category search bar here, drop down menu to filter for particular themes as well. So for education, I do classroom and you can see we're now limited to more classroom specific characters. If I wanted um, young people, I could also, uh, you know, use that category uh, and then professionals, all sorts of different characters for you. So really have a play around. But using this pencil tool here, all I need to do is pick my character. I can place my character against a background or I can remove the background altogether and hit transparent background. Uh, and uh, then as you as you know, well, we can then, if it's a transparent background, you can then drop it into another project and um, use it as an explainer um, and it takes up less room. So to actually give your character some life and you need to give it an audio performance. So I'm just going to, um, and there's two ways you can do this. You can record this directly into your computer or if you have pre-recorded uh, an explainer, you want to use that on your phone or whatever it is you've uh, used to record your audio on, you can actually browse to find that audio and upload it from your computer as well, so long as you load it into your computer so it can actually grab from there. So let's just record uh, directly into my computer here. I am going to hit enhance speech just so it's a good um, it's it's a good thing to to make sure you're always doing because it just essentially uses Adobe's technology to sound treat your audio. So if there's annoying background noise, it'll take out the background noise. It'll increase like it'll increase the vocal presence that you have it just will give do the kind of basic three things that helps your audio sound like it was kind of recorded in a podcast studio as opposed to wherever you're recording all right so i'm going to hit record here oh make sure you allow access hello i am mr pencil and this is a quick character animate demo so when you do an uh, audio performance, you want to make sure that there's inflection in your voice because the more inflection that you give your character, the more animated um, it will eventually be. I've done this before where I've been half awake in the morning and my to my voice has been very monotonous and my character looks half asleep and, and barely moves his arms. So make sure uh, when you are giving it an audio performance, you give it something to work with. And then essentially what uh, the technology is going to do, it's going to take that uh, audio, lip sync the character and create some body movements based on that audio performance. And once it's loaded up, hello, I am Mr. Pencil and this is a quick character animate demo. Can you guys hear that and see that? Great. So, so that is how you use character animates. Really fun. I see teachers uh, use this at the beginning of their classes to get the students laughing. It's just a really great way to create engagement and get a bit of fun happening um, 
use as an icebreaker, things like that. It's one of our favorites. If you want to keep editing, just hit open in editor and then you'll be taken through to that same editor experience where you can copy and paste your character around uh, from there. Uh, but that is character animate. Adding captions now. Let's say you want to create some content as well. Um, you can also create captions within your quick actions as well. Uh, and what's great is you can actually translate those captions as well. Um, if you if that's something you choose to lean on um, as part of your content creation. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to demo it. It's pretty intuitive, um, but you will find your ad caption under your quick actions as well. Couple things I wanted to show you. Last few things um, is the website creator within Adobe Express. Uh, so I'm going to open up that now. This is just a test file just to show you the kind of functionality uh, that's within your website builder. Um, it's very, very intuitive. Essentially, this is a low to no code web builder and a really great way to sort of bring together all of your assignment um, components under the one clickable interactive web experience. Uh, now, this is pass pro password protected. So it will have a um, non-searchable URL. So that meaning like if I went into Google and tried to find this website, I wouldn't be able to access it via Google. But if I had the shareable link, almost like a SharePoint link, if I did have access to that, I could access it because it's hosted on a web link. Um, but if I didn't want people who maybe happens to get a hold of that web link, if I didn't want them to have access, um, I can password protect my website uh, by if I hit share here, um, this is where I can add a password protection. So I just hit password protect here and then I'd give it a nice hard to hard to guess password there. Um, but what I love about this is it it's a really great way to house all of your um, students assignments in a way that's um, again interactive. So what we're seeing now is the editor. And you know it's the editor because you see lots of little plus symbols. And this is where you can add new components to your web page. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But if I wanted to preview how this looked in the non-editor mode, all I would do is click the I here. And as you can see, all those little plus signs do go away. And you can see we've actually um, given it an Adobe identity. There is a way to um, create that. Uh, University of Queensland brand identity as well in Express. So you can make it look like a University of Queensland brand. Um, but you can see if I scroll down here, uh, everything almost auto animates. So I've not done any of this. Uh, this isn't any kind of coding on my part. This is all auto, auto animated, um, uh, auto animated web experience, which I think is really awesome. You'll notice here, that we've got buttons as well. So if I click on this button here, that's an interactive link. So you can see it's the button is tied to um, the, the Express uh, homepage. So it'll take me there. But this is really great if you're referencing particular, particular scholar art articles that are um, hosted online or whatever. Um, really great way to have all of those reference material in there. You can also embed here um, video components. So you can see I've got uh, video elements that I can click on and press play. So like I said, just really interactive uh, and a great takeaway for your students. Uh, and then obviously you've got photo collages as well. All right, so how did I do this? I'm gonna click out of the preview mode. Essentially what you'll get um, at the beginning here is, um, obviously this is a built website. Um, so there's lots of pluses and lots of components. When you're starting from scratch, it'll just be uh, this top section here. And it'll look a little bit like this. It'll just like look like a blank web page. And this is uh, where um, you can either make this a full page landing page or a smaller one. So all I would do is uh, hit, I'd click on my image here, I'd give it a short cover. And then that, I just like how that looks. Um, and then if, as I want to start building out my website, all I do is I, I start building down. So I hit my little plus symbol and it says, what do you want to add? I can add a button. And this is where I would drop in my, uh, the, the link to wherever that button navigates over to. I could place it, like I could center align it, side align it as well from here. 
but essentially you can edit everything uh, in there. Let's say I um, added some text. I could come in, oh, I could come in, write some text. And I, let's say I wanted to give it a header or make it more distinctive. I could come in with that text. And again, my contextual bar makes me able to select this as you know a header, a subtitle, make it a quote. Perhaps I want to make some bullet points, but you get the idea. You can you can really go through and then build out this website um, quite intuitively. Um, how much time do I have? Eight minutes. Uh, what else do I want to show you guys? Um, you can see there's hyperlinks as well. So this here, this underlined text, that's a hyperlink. And to add in a hyperlink, you just, again, click on the text you want to create a hyperlink for, hit that hyperlink button, give it a web page to associate that with. Uh, and that is how you create a hyperlink. Now, I just want to talk, the last thing I want to cover off is um, the, the integrations as well with um, other Adobe solutions that touch Express and really good for researching assignments. So I'm going to fire up uh, Acrobat. And you can see here I've got an, uh, the University of Queensland annual report here. So what's great is Acrobat now has Express connectivity. Uh, and there's a few uh, ways that you can get to Express to make to make like creative edits to your PDF. Let's say I wanted to um, redesign this whole PDF in Express. What I could do is I could um, hit Stylize PDF under the Edit tab here, and that'll fire up for me Adobe Express. I'm not going to do it now because I just, again, only uh, eight minutes left. So, um, but oh, there we go. You can see that's um, fired this up in Adobe Express there. But if I didn't want to leave Adobe Express, uh, if I didn't want to leave Acrobat and I just wanted to make a quick edit to this headshot, again, of uh, your chancellor, let's say I wanted to update this headshot with a new headshot, like, because my research tells me that this is an old photo. Um, so let's say I wanted to replace this with a new photo. All I do is click on that image, hit uh, go to the replace image section, hit choose my image, find my new photo and drop that in. But of course, I want things to be on brand, right? And I know purple is very much the University of Queensland aesthetic. So maybe I'd lean on a bit of generative AI here. And what I can actually do is access that by hitting uh, edit image. And again, this will fire up a little sandboxed instance of Adobe Express. As you can see, I'm not actually leaving Acrobat. I'm still within Express. But let's say we wanted to give our chancellor a nice purple tie, keep it on brand, fly the UQ flag, purple tie, hit generate. It's pretty amazing, uh, the results. What I've seen people use this for really, um, really well is um, let's say they have a photo of themselves, but someone's wearing like a, a logo on their shirt. They just want to get rid of that logo, or perhaps there's a flyaway in a headshot. And they just want to quickly clean that up. Uh, using generative AI in Adobe Express is a really great way to kind of leverage Photoshop-like actions without necessarily having to know Photoshop. So again, this is really fun. Do with it what what you will there. Um, but yes, a great way to just make quick Photoshop-like edits to your images. Then all you need to do is hit apply. And again, that's going to send that back to our um, to our little uh, image there. All right, now I've made a change to this document. So I'm just going to refresh my AI assistant window here to talk about one last generative AI um, element that you get as part of your license as a creative um, enabled campus. Um, so we've been talking about image-based generative AI up until this point, but I just wanted to talk a little very, very quickly about um, Adobe Acrobat and how it leverages AI services um, to help accelerate uh, research for your students or even, even yourself. So of course, this is a, a pretty large document. And let's say I wanted to very quickly um, scan and summarize this document. Uh, what essentially I can do is I can open up my AI assistant window. And what it'll do, which is what it's doing now, is it'll analyze that document and uh, generate a summary for me. But essentially, it will also uh, create for me uh, a generative AI, oop, a generative 
a, a chat GPT like experience um, that I can basically have a conversation with my PDF document and actually uh, inquire the document. So it'll firstly give me some suggested questions. So for example, um, uh, it gives me an overview here, um, but then I could also uh, ask it questions and you see it, it gives you an example here. So I can actually click on this question and what it'll do is it'll um, scan the document for the relevant information and then surface that uh, to you in your chat box with references. So you can see if I click the little, uh, there's a little number at the end of each sentence. This is essentially sourcing where uh, uh, the AI assistant has actually gathered this material from. What's great about this is essentially what you're looking at is uh, accuracy. So a lot of the times with ChatGPT, you can get a lot of hallucinations because it's an aggregator of everything on the internet. So sometimes it's actually quite inaccurate. Uh, when you're using a tool like that. But what's great about Acrobat is it, you're in that same experience, but within a sandboxed environment. Uh, so you know everything is referenced and accurate to that particular document. Now, if I wanted to do, um, you know, give me a summary of the key uh, take of, let's say, of five key takeaways. I can also do this. So again, this this really just accelerates um, how students can sift through uh, their research assignments and leverage generative AI as part of uh, the tools in their tool belt. And also this is something that we use every day as professionals when we need to research our customers, maybe we're uh, short on time. It's a really great way to help accelerate that uh, process. And as you can see, it's given us uh, the uh, four love or five uh, key takeaways for that. All right, I think I'm going to stop there. A minute left. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sarah, you're amazing. I don't know how you time keep so well. Thank yeah. you so much for the demo. I hope everyone um got something out of that. There was, I put a little bit of a summary in the chat just around what we covered today. So if anything was of interest, I'm also putting my details in so that you guys can run away to your next session. But we hope this was helpful. Even if one idea was one that you thought was really fabulous, please reach out and we're looking forward to helping and supporting you guys moving forward.